Think I'm exaggerating? They gave the show a spin-off! Kent, I'm not trying to be funny here. It is absolutely abysmal! <laughs> I'm done. I am never touching this franchise again. Uh, yeah, about that. Power of K-pop, mom. It's real. Ugh. Greetings, friends. I haven't formally acknowledged it, but it's been a while. I had a few too many sips of the mental health juice before coming to the shocking realization that making one video per week and living off of chicken noodles might not be a healthy lifestyle. Nevertheless, I'm back and feel I'm finally ready to return to the Loud House, the cash cow masquerading as a dead horse that I refuse to stop beating. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I've made an absolutely disgusting amount of money talking about this series. Like, guys, guys, I could afford Nando's twice last week. Not that the ads over here in the UK make me want to go there. But I only ordered a medium. Also, the casual racism in the comment section. What was I talking about again? Ah, right! The Loud House. So far, I've covered the original series, at least everything that was out at the time of me making that video. The Netflix movie with musical segments that I believe are intended for deaf people. The live-action Christmas movie that made me issue a death threat to a fictional child, and the first few episodes of the live-action series which is getting a second season, by the way, as opposed to the producers being put on a watch list. Also, there's a Halloween movie coming. I might talk about that, I'm not sure. But today's topic has been anticipated for a while, I think. The Loud House, a while back, got so popular despite long running past the point of being good, also inadvertently making Amphibia a worse show, yes, I'm serious about that, that it was granted an entire spin-off show focusing on a recurring character of the original series. Okay, that's the only Cleveland show joke I make in this video, I swear. Lord knows everyone ran that into the ground before I did. The Casa Grandes focuses on Ronnie Ann, the previous bully turned love interest of Lincoln Loud, who for some reason brings Mr. Enter an inch closer to an aneurysm. Which is a message that's not only wrong, but dangerous. Bro, it's a bad message, but put the fedora down, we're talking about the Loud House. And despite this being a spin-off of Nickelodeon's most popular cartoon, a quick look at the ratings shows a horrifying reality. Christ. So after three seasons, the show was unceremoniously cancelled likely leaving the only two fans of the show on Suicide Watch, but I found it very funny. People have asked me here and there to review this show, but I've always been a bit hesitant. I'm aware of the fact that I milked this franchise a lot, and I did ultimately intend for my video on the live action series to be the last one I ever made. Hell, on my planned video list, I literally have to cast a Grande's video marked as a break in case of emergency. And I mean, taking a month off of YouTube for your mental health, and then returning when you're attending university and have to pay your own bills, like, y y you know how it is, it's just business. Lord business. business. In any case, I at least enjoy making fun of this franchise and a nine-year-old kid who's been calling me slurs for two years now, so this should be a relatively fun little beating session. Like Yakuza, that's a fun series. Can you tell what my current hyperfixation is? With that out of the way, let's milk. Before we get into the show itself, let's go over some context. Let me brush up on my Loud House lore just a second. Jesus Christ, I need to get laid. Ronnie Anne was introduced in the Loud House as early as season one and was originally a generic faceless bully who frequently picked on and humiliated Lincoln at school. The episode focused on the Loud siblings running on the assumption that Lincoln's bully is a guy and sticking up for him so much to the point that they drag a random kid into the house and gang up on him, which is perfectly legal apparently. Laurie is canonically 18, she should count her days, but then the second Lincoln reveals his bully is a girl, they all start squawking about how a girl bullying you means that she's definitely into you, or something like that. Which as much as I think people People tend to get overdramatic about this series showing certain things to children. This is still a pretty gross message, and even worse, that ended up being true after the scene where Lincoln gets punched in the f***ing face. <laughs> After this episode, Lincoln's bully is finally revealed as Ronnie Ann and proceeds to make frequent physical appearances in many future episodes as they develop a relationship. And by the way, I'd just like to add that Ronnie's older brother is Bobby, who's dating Lincoln's older sister Laurie, and the whole episode Laurie and Bobby's relationship is wavering until they see their younger siblings kiss together and suddenly decide they're back together again. Holy crap, am I happy Chris Savino got fired, even if not everything has changed positively. This is a real tweet, by the way. And later into the show's second season, Ronnie Ann is effectively written out of the show, as they dedicate an entire episode introducing us to the titular Casa Grandes, Ronnie Ann and Bobby's extended family, and basically acting as a backdoor pilot to the series, which we will get to in a moment, and ending with Ronnie and Bobby moving in. After this, the two would still appear in the Loud House, but a lot less than usual. That was until the Loud House season four, where the season opens with nine entire episodes, not dedicated to the actual focus of the show, being the Loud family, but instead being full 
full-length episodes about Ronnie Anne and her family in order to promote the upcoming spin-off, The Casa Grandes. First mistake, hijacking the original show just to promote a spin-off for nine entire episodes at the start of a new season, no less, is not a way to get in people's good graces, especially with how this played out, too. Like, this intro was such a debate. <laughs> If you like the louds, come meet my family. Oh, fuck off. And like, even by Loud House's frankly abysmal standards at this point, these episodes were really distinctly sh** because they were boring. And they were boring because, well, the cast was boring. Say what you want about the Loud House. I'm showing a lot of restraint, I promise. For a kid show of this many characters, it's amazing how each of them have such strong and well-defined personalities to the point where you can easily remember the names of every loud sibling after watching a few episodes. But despite the Casa Grandes on paper working under the same premise as the Loud House, but instead focusing more on the cast's culture as Mexican-Americans, each of the characters lacks a personality that's anywhere close to being as strong as the Louds. And I'm talking this extensively about it before we've even gotten to the main show yet, because it's a clear sign of why the Casa Grandes was doomed to fail and it can conceptual level. The strongest part about Loud House and the main draw of it was watching a quote-unquote normal boy navigate through a family of ten sisters with far more extreme personalities, habits, interests, and mannerisms. And while there are differences in the cast of the Casa Grandes, very few of the characters stand out on their own and are just not as enjoyable to watch as the Loud siblings are during the brief moments post-season one, where the Loud House decides to be good all of a sudden. And that's where it ends for the Casa Grandes activity in the Loud House, at least to my knowledge because I don't want to watch the extra two seasons the show has had since I made my first video. I I'm likely going to give myself a hernia doing that. Let's finally jump into the main topic of the video, the Casa Grandes. Again. The TV show this time. Now, you've likely come to this conclusion by now. The Casa Grandes is an incredibly similar show to The Loud House, but I'd like to offer a counterpoint to that conclusion. The Casa Grandes is not similar to The Loud House. It's actually the exact same show, except somehow f***ing worse in every conceivable way due to it being agonizing to sit through. Now, I am a 19-year-old man now, so obviously I may not be the best to consult on this, but I can still watch an episode of Loud House Season 1 with my little sister, and we can both still find some enjoyment out of it. And even Loud House's later season still retains some of what made the show so charming in the first place, even when it's at its absolute worst. I think the most glaring flaw of the show is its mere concept. The Casa Grande focuses on a single character navigating through a large family. Do you see the problem? Usually with a spin-off property that focuses on a different set of characters to the main show, it's expected for there to be a decent amount of differences in how the show is structured and written, often establishing itself pretty distinctly to the point where you can look at it and see that the two shows are rather different, even if at the end of the day you can look at them and go, okay, so this is one of the worst things ever made by a human. This is because there's not much of a point of doing a spin-off if your intent is to just make the original show twice. Not just because it's creatively bankrupt, yeah I know you like that, shut up, but because audiences will very quickly lose interest in a spin-off if they're getting the same show they've been watching for years, but just worse. When you have two cartoons running at the same time, filling the exact same niche concept, viewers, especially kids, are naturally going to be more drawn to the show they've been familiar with for years when nothing new is being offered. Conceptually, this show is already a disaster, but this leads into many of the reasons why the Casa Grande ends up being significantly worse than The Loud House. Casa Grande's main problem, outside of its mere disappointing birth, is the fact that each of the main characters are personality vacuum. Again, to go further with my point from a second ago, Loud House got popular in the first place because of the appeal of its characters and how they were all completely distinct from one another personality-wise. And visually, their individual quirks are easy to spot and their attires complement their personalities greatly by associating each character with a specific colour and vastly different clothes. You look at Luna and Luann for 5 seconds and you can immediately gather, okay, this girl is a rock star and this one is a comedian. It is incredibly easy to tell what each character's deal is and how strong their personalities actually are. Once again, Lucy's the goth, Lisa's the scientist, Lana's the tomboy, and Lynn. <laughs> So please enlighten me, the two Casa Grandes fans still living on this earth. What is this character's personality? Like, just from looking at them, what is their personality? How about this one? Or this one? Here's a challenge, dear viewer. Please look at all of these characters, and besides Ronnie Ann, please try telling me what their defining personality traits are. I'll give you some time. Time's up. To make a show like this work, you need characters that have these big, exaggerated personalities and have their character designs complement said personality traits. Because if Loud House didn't do that, then it would be boring as sin. Not that sin is uncommon for this 
show, it would be a wasted concept. The chaos that ensues from seeing these wildly different characters interact with one another is what made early Loud House episodes so appealing for people of all ages. I have attended funeral services more stimulating than this show. Hearing a grown man sharting their genes out from behind a wall was more entertaining than watching these characters interact and do stuff. There's no typical expected Loud House chaos. Hell, I could have done with Lincoln showing up to commit his war crimes. That would have at least made the show somewhat entertaining. I have to skim read this show's wiki just to wrap my head around what their actual personalities are, because it's just so much unbridled nothing that falling asleep to this show would likely cause a singularity. Heck, even comparing the wiki descriptions of the Loud House characters to the Casa Grande's characters, you can see just how lacking they are. All of these detailed descriptions of the characters' habits and quirks versus my favourite personality traits like smooth talker, photographer, and of course my favourite, Divorce. If there's one thing I can give to the cast, one of the characters, Carlos Jr, or CJ, is a young kid with Down syndrome and he's honestly the sweetest part of the show. Like, they handled this kid pretty well and I can see such a positive portrayal of Down syndrome having a big impact on many kids who also have developmental disabilities. Not saying that having Down syndrome is a personality trait, that's not where I'm going with this. I just think it's really cool that the show has representation like this as it's incredibly uncommon in a lot of kid shows for a main character to have Down syndrome. I just wish he and the episodes that focus on him were in a better show. As for the other Casa Grandes, not a single one of them is interesting to watch. The closest any of them get to having something is Carlota, who is incredibly kind and incredibly into fashion. So she's Lenny then. That's Lenny's thing. She's just Lenny but not a stereotypical dumb blonde. Yeah, I need a drink. Ronnie and Bobby are the only mildly enjoyable characters here, and I say enjoyable very loosely. There's also the topic of Ronnie and herself. The main star, the main personality the show centers around, a character supposedly so good they had to write her out of the main show and give her the spotlight. If anything can justify making this spin-off, it'll be Ronnie Anne's much rougher attitude and personality that helps elevate this. She's Lincoln 2.0, just minus the casual sociopathy. In the Loud House Ronnie Ann, while she did mellow out over time from her days as a bully, had a much rougher tomboyish edge and attitude compared to Lincoln. And if they were going to give her an entire show where she has the spotlight, it would have made the carbon copy Loud House show more interesting if they showed how she would interact with a large family. Except the executives must have sensed this potential risk being taken, projectile vomited their bottle of soy, grabbed a sniper rifle and aimed it directly at the writers' heads until they conformed to the idea of appeal. So from the Casa Grande's onwards, Ronnie Ann has pretty much all of her individuality removed. Her tomboyish side is basically an aesthetic now, and now she's just Lincoln, but girl. She retains all of Lincoln's actually likeable qualities, but not balancing it out with the few selfish traits that kept Lincoln somewhat grounded and entertaining. While on the flip side, this means Ronnie Ann won't have an episode where she becomes a Tory, she's just essentially diet Lincoln, killing the only thing this show actually had going for it. Also because Lincoln has his group of five friends in the Loud House, Ronnie Ann also needed a group of five friends. Who cares? None of them actually matter except for Sid, whose main personality traits involve being really nice and and also having a parasocial relationship with a K-pop star. I wish I was making that last part up. They also have her reference K-pop a lot, like a lot, a lot, and for some reason she also has a birthmark of Abraham Lincoln. And I'm just gonna let you guess where that birthmark is on her body. It's the foot, it's always the foot. Old habits die hard as they say, like Dan Schneider's career. The characters being so one note and bland was the Achilles heel to the show's appeal. Because without any interesting personalities or antics, what's the point? Which leads into the actual episodes themselves. What? Pinhead wrote these. They're not very good. Now I want you to imagine the most mind-numbing, boring thing that you've ever done in your free time. Whether that's reading a single page of Harry Potter, willingly looking at Steam reviews, or watching a single George Not Found video, right? Now extend that to three seasons with basically no shake-ups at all. If I'll give anything to the Casa Grande, it's at least consistent with making the most bland episodes for a Nickelodeon show I've ever had the misery of watching. No wonder kids were actually switching the channel when this shit came on. I'm getting tired out just watching this. Loud House comparison time. People People try getting away with saying all of the Loud House is hilariously awful, but I still stand by the fact that if the show ended at season 1, you'd see far more people talking about the show in high regard like they do with shows like Rugrats, Rockers Modern Life, and Hey Arnold. Now I'm not implying the show is remotely close to that level of quality, even in its first season, but Loud House season 1 was enjoyed by kids and adults alike because it had the energy of a classic Nicktoon. You do not know how much restraint it took to not mention the fanbase's pedophile oops, and that can be seen from the episodes themselves which actually took advantage of its premise to tell high energy stories 
stories about navigating for a large family. It gave the show its appeal and charm. While later seasons would simplify the show into being a show only for young children that people see it as now, you can't remove the initial hype it had from history. The Casa Grande was obviously going to suffer from the approach being much different than it used to be, but it almost never takes advantage of its premise like The Loud House does. Whereas Loud House's first season took basic concepts like having a sleepover, taking a family photo, and doing basic chores and took them to the absolute largest extreme they possibly could, the Casa Grande either has the most bland and boring execution of an episode based on babysitting an alpaca, or the episode just isn't focused on the concept of the show in the first place, and is therefore directionless with no appeal, doing a checklist of plot points. Also the most confusing episodes have to be when the show crosses back over with The Loud House. Now having Lincoln show up from time to time is understandable given how close he is to Ronnie Ann, but sometimes it goes as far as going back into The Loud House itself of all of The Loud siblings present. The Casa Grandes also show up in future episodes of The Loud House after Ronnie Ann moves. Not that I've seen them myself because <laughs> Not watching the show again. And having this happen in both shows, when both shows are this identical, really emphasizes just how pointless the Casa Grande's existence actually is outside of making money, and yeah, good luck with that. I'm really trying to find more words to describe this show other than bland and boring, but unless my thesaurus is missing a page, I don't think there's any other word I can use. Not like I can always make up my own. The most interesting moment of the show is when they have a guest appearance from George Lopez, and it's only because I can't unhear Mr. Electric every time he speaks. The comedy is about on par of the Loud House post season 3, which is to say if you're the kind of person who scrolls through Facebook looking at boomer comics, you're probably going to get the most value out of this show, which is to say the show is painfully unfunny garbage. It's actually very impressive for a show to be this incapable of making me laugh, and it's not because I'm an adult, mostly. Like kids were straight up turning this show off or watching something else on a streaming service because cable TV is dead. When it's not bare bones slapstick or the same desperate gross out humor that Loud House began to rely on as a crutch, it just became some of the most milk toast back and forth dialogue that consistently falls flat, and using some of the very bare personality traits some of the characters have for a quick joke that still doesn't work half the time. Like if I laughed at anything in this show, I would tell you. I laughed at this this morning. <laughs> But there is not a single entertaining bone in this show's body. It is determined to put you to sleep with every episode. And if we're getting more technical when it comes to the show being a miserable failure, Nickelodeon got insanely lucky with The Loud House Season 1. It got very popular very quickly, largely because of that multi-generational appeal it had. It had the fast-paced comedy and heart warmth for kids, while pleasantly reminding adults of the cartoons they used to watch on Nickelodeon back in the day. Up until The Loud House, there was really nothing going for Nickelodeon other than modern SpongeBob, so the moment something actually different hit it big on its premiere, they would go all in on it. And Nickelodeon is incredibly greedy, as you're all probably aware by now, and instead of taking the hint that maybe advertising new shows and giving them a chance to actually compete was a good idea, they zoned in hard on making Loud House its next big thing and did exactly what they did with Spongebob with to it. The Casa Grandes only exist because they wanted a bit of extra cash, and even if it wasn't supposed to be as big as Loud House, I don't think they foresaw just how much of a failure it ended up being. And lacking the quality that Loud House had didn't help with keeping people's interest, and the ratings gradually declined to the point where they couldn't even pull in 200,000 viewers for their final season. A large part of that is also the death of cable and the rise of streaming, which also adds to the show's failures because it simply didn't stand a chance at all. Loud House is still dominating Nickelodeon in both TV ratings and on streaming, not to mention Spongebob still being as popular of kids as ever, so the Casa Grandes was basically doomed to fall into obscurity, ultimately leading to Nickelodeon's decision to cancel it in 2022, and the world lets out a resounding... Meh. Followed by me dying of laughter. I do enjoy preying on this franchise's downfall because it's an easy target, but it is still kind of depressing how Nickelodeon was given every opportunity to shake things up and is repeatedly stuck to the same tune for decades now, and has only been kept alive by its live action shows. Why is Henry Danger still alive? And the two cartoons it holds above everything else that doesn't stand a damn chance. There's not much else for me to say, really. I struggle to say anything more for the last two and a half pages for this script. The Casa Grandes is just that boring and forgettable, and its failure is blindingly obvious. I don't know if I'll be talking about The Loud House very much going forward. I guess we'll just wait and see how that Halloween movie plays out. Yeah, who am I kidding? I'm definitely talking about that. And you're choking up because you could never